Hello and welcome to Thomas's Tower Readings with myself, Thomas Janak. A lot has happened over the last couple of months. I've been really, really busy and just didn't get around to recording a lot of videos. And as you can imagine, recording uh, 15, 20 minutes videos for each sign and then edit them and upload them is way more work than doing my card for the day on TikTok. And I'm just not having enough um, people viewing to warrant the hours of work I put into this. So at this point in time, I'm not quite sure if I actually continue the channel. The channel is now six years old and I'm still uh, have less than 350 people subscribing. And I keep saying to you guys, please like, subscribe and share. And uh, I understand that YouTube makes that difficult, but if it is too much work for you to uh, make a bloody uh, uh, fake account so you can just subscribe, maybe you're not that interested in the readings in the first place. I don't know what else to suggest because the uh, algorithm simply does not find me and it is tedious <clears throat> to record all these videos, um, you know, months and months and for years on end with hardly anybody watching. Anyway, with that frustration, with that frustration out of the way, what I'm doing today, uh, because there will be no readings in January, I still didn't, just uh, haven't got the time to do that. <coughs> and like I said, the motivation is completely lacking here uh, because nobody seems to respond to anything I do on here and hasn't really been interested in for years. I know there's a few people that come to me and are really, really grateful, but this is a matter of how much time can I actually spend on this. So what I do here, recording this at the end of December, is literally um, a 2024 predictive uh, uh, um, video for each sign. I will have two cards per sign and then we look at your year ahead. Um, and we're starting with the first sign in our zodiac sign, which obviously is Aries. Aries, are you ready? This is your 2024 predictive astrology. Let's have a look what we got. And I'm having two cards. I'm going to, you know, things don't really flow um, in half a year here, half a year there, because life is way more organic. But I try to sort of separate this slightly so it is easier to actually understand this. So it is interesting because the number 30 is here for your first half of the year, Aries. And 30 means three means the number of progression. And in the second half of the year, that's when you have the progression part, progression uh, uh, card. Um, and the number 56, which means 11, which means master number, full power. While the entire year will be a year of progression for Aries, only in the middle of the year will, you, uh, uh, will your journey, your progression, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, be really felt. So what we have is for the first um, part of the year, again, the card denotes six months. I don't really feel it that way. To me, it feels like things are getting coming into their own around April for Aries. Ultimately, you have, you have thinking as your topic for the first half of 2024. And what that means is uh, they're not asking you to stop uh, come June, uh, to think, <laughs> come June, what you are asked, Aries, is to understand, plan things, look at what it is you really want, maybe even research things a little to figure out if this is really what you want to commit to before you commit and allow things to be a bit of a journey. Don't try to look at, um, I need to experience this by then. Aries is the first sign. You're a doer. And I understand that if you do things with little return, um, you get frustrated as a sign, but your entire 2024 will be a bit of a journey. And at, this, and at the same time, the guides are saying to you is, what is it you want to do? Right? Be focused on what it is you, you want to do, but think about where do you feel this should lead without having any expectation that it must lead to where you feel you want it to go or how far it is supposed to go, if that makes sense, right? So for Aries, your entire 2024 is going to be a journey. And in the first half of the year, you are asked to look at what is it I really want to do and how much can I actually influence said journey? And then towards the, the um, 
towards the half year mark and then forward, uh, things will be much clearer for you uh, and much easier to figure out what you want to do with your life. Okay, now let's uh, move on to Taurus. Hello, Taurus. This is your 2024 predictive astrology. Now let's have a look what we got. Well, <laughs> you got Nept uh, you, you got Mercury for your first half of the year, and you have Neptune for the latter part of the year. Now let me just say this: you can't just divide uh, a year into two sections. Life is a journey, life flows, it doesn't quite work that way, but it does help to figure out how to go about the new year because 2024, 2 and 2 plus 4 is 8. 8 is the number of stumbling blocks, which means you need to change, we all need to change our views to topple over the 8 and turn it to an infinity um, to see where we're going. Now, in the first half of 2024, my dear Torians, you have Mercury and Mercury is about communication. And yet, and remember, these are general readings. They might not be for all of you. The, the number here um, is number 20, two is two, or two for that reason. Uh, two is the number of units. So this is more about your private life, your personal life, than it is about business at this point in time. In anything to do with manifesting relationships or making the relationship you, you are in um, stronger, especially in the first six months of 2024, a lot of things will come to you that need to be looked at, if that makes sense. And communication is the key for you um, in the first half, so to speak, of the year. Now, it gets a bit easier uh, in the second half of the year, but in the second half of the year, you have the number 26. Two and six is eight. Eight is the number of stumbling blocks. So you can expect the entirety uh, of 2024 to not be a year necessarily, Toreans, that flows super easily. But nothing here is actually negative or um, not doable because the energy that you have sort of for the latter part of 2024 or the, the second half of 2024 is Neptune. And Neptune is the energy that brings you um, spiritual awareness. And so when you look at your more spiritual side uh, towards, so you, you, you work on your, on your, on your uh, communication with your loved ones, right? So your, your, your family, your home, um, that kind of stuff. And then you focus on where you want to go for the rest of the year. But look at your true spiritual self. Remember, you are a spiritual being with a physical experience. Right? So you are by default from the stars and you are by default spiritual. And what the guides are saying is, remember this uh, for the latter half or the second half rather in 2024 and, and see if you can have a vision of where it is you want to go. So focus is quite important for, for Taurus. Um, and because you have Neptune here, uh, which is Pisces, um, governing sign, people who are more on the cusp between Pisces and um, and Taurus will very likely have it a little uh, easier to understand where things are going. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to be born on the cusp, right? So the cusp means that, that um, as Pisces comes to an end, before Pisces go, uh, turns into um, into Taurus, I think it's around the 20th of April um, in your case. Uh, so when your sign becomes the strongest, you still will be affected by the dreamer, which is, which is Pisces. So if you are born on the cusp, um, things for you will be a tad easier uh, for those who are not necessarily born on the cusp, which means you are born later into your sign, um, which normally gives you more strength than being born early into your sign. But um, you have Neptune. Everything and anything you should do in 2024, especially as it comes towards the second half of the year, is about looking at things spiritually and seeing where you want to go. Okay, that is that. Thank you very much. Next sign is Gemini. Well then, Gemini, this is your 2024 predictive astrology and we are dividing your year, sort of, 
<clears throat> which is because you can't just divide a year that easily into two sections just to see where your year 2024 is going now for the so to speak first half of the year you know the beginning of the year going towards summer you have the sun there's nothing stronger than the energy of the sun the sun is 16 million times brighter than the next brightest star in our solar system which is Sirius I'm so serious right so it's amazing how strong the sun is and the sun is also always when you are being born wherever the sun sits becomes your sun sign slash star sign so and the number of the sun card here is 18 1 and 8 is 9 number of completion what you're being asked Gemini in 2024 to keep going and to be a bit more forceful go for what it is you want do not stop now Gemini is the sign of the twin which means sometimes your inner voice isn't really working and depending on how your chart flows um, if your ascendant is not um, in a good setting um, you know um, self-empowerment may not be so easy because it is not the easiest of tasks to assign to a Gemini that said um, what you're being asked is to be determined you know where if you are some in a situation where you kind of go like, this situation is not so great I'm gonna change it right <laughs> then change it don't just sit there moaning right you have to bring about change and you have the strength to do so right from the get-go um, and then in, um, in towards the middle of the year or the you know so you then change into the energy of cancerians now here's an important thing cancer is the only sign that is governed by the moon and then you have the sun now the sun and the moon right i always say that the sun is the ruler of the day and the moon is the ruler of the night but these two luminaries as they're called do not share space well as a matter of fact where they actually overlap you can expect quite a lot of uh, problems um, which also have to do with communication so when they are close together uh, which in your case they are because they are um, governing your entire year if that makes sense you will very likely find it difficult in 2024 to decide whether to follow your head or your heart now when you are determined from the get-go in 2024 by the time summer comes around if that makes sense you will already have made a lot of progress because you have the number nine uh, with the sun which means you know this is about all things coming to an end and then you can uh, actually allow yourself towards the middle of the year to really feel how do you see the world and be more emotional with regards to your future and more sense things rather than being analytical if that makes sense in the second in the second half and you have to really immerse yourself into this I'm going to feel this. I'm going to, I'm not going to be analytical about what I want to do in 2024. I need to be sure this is what my heart wants to do. Right. So it's easier in the second half of the year to not be quite as, um, torn between your head and your heart. Okie dokie. That was, Ge that was Gemini going into the next sign, which is Cancerian. <clears throat> Like I just said, Cancer is the only sign governed by the moon. Right, Cancerians. <coughs> what we do here is this is your 2024 um, predictive astrology. So we divide your year, if that makes sense, uh, at least energetically speaking, into two sections so we can easier see where you're going uh, in the year, even though, you know, by default you do not just cut a year and a half but in the beginning of the year you have community as a topic and you need to understand this if you are going things alone or if you are a person that becomes a couch potato in 2024 it will not work for you find a hobby find something to do do not hide do not think i'm actually uh, a bit tired um, so i do nothing will not work for you cancerians really really important um, to understand that in the first half of the year that is when you should be uh when you should be pushing yourself and you should push yourself forward saying okay let's see what i can do with my life and then you know make that happen so to speak and then the second 
part of 2024. Um, you, your energy here is in the fifth house here, to, uh, card wise. Um, right? And the fifth house is the house of Leo. Um, and Leo is governed by the sun, you are governed by the moon. So come the latter half, you, you will get a bit more focused on things, but you also will tire uh, easier. Um, and therefore, in the second half of the year, you should really only do, if that makes sense, what you like. So anything that you're passionate about will come to fruition and will work much, much better in the second half of the year for Cancerians. Okie dokie. So let's move on to Leo. Wow. <laughs> so, Leo, this is your 2024 uh, predictive astrology, which means we're looking at your year. Um, and normally what I, what I, what I do here uh, this time around, I do uh, separate the year slightly into two sections so we can see where, does, where, the year start, where the year starts and then where it continues halfway through, just to give you an idea where you're going. Now, in your case... The guides only gave me one card and one card only. And the energy that you have is the energy of exploration. Now, remember, you are governed by the sun. Right? You kick ass. You are depicted by a male lion. Um, you wouldn't mess with one. At the same time, the lion walks his perimeter and then rests a lot. So while you are exploring, so th this is going to be a good year for, for uh, Leos to really try out new things. Um, because the energy just works better that way for you to look into what hasn't worked and let that go is better than, than trying to figure out why hasn't it worked and what can be tweaked. I'm getting new adventures are easier to work than, um, let's say older things, right? So Leo's, your job in 2024 is to <coughs> explore. What is it I want to do? You don't have to make decisions so easily, if that makes sense, in 2024. But it's also going to be a year that might be a bit more, more difficult for you to make decisions. Now, the good or the best thing here is that every card in my deck has a number. And you have seven and four. Seven is the number of protection and healing. Four is the number of letting go. Right? So you're fully protected while you let old stuff go. Together, seven and four is 11. 11 is the highest master number there is. So while you are exploring new paths and a new future, you will be supported by the universe. Okay, Virgo. Let's have a look at Virgo. Virgo, what we do here, this is your 2024 predictive astrology. You are watching Thomas Tower Readings with myself, Thomas Janak. Please like, subscribe and share. And while I haven't recorded all that much lately, you can also just find me on TikTok, uh, where I do a card for the day, if that makes sense. Um, so, are you ready? Virgos, you are by default the sign that works quite well under stress, and therefore when you're actually stressed, you sort of get used to it. <laughs> and um, you can't do that. So what we do here is we divide the year slightly into two sections just to see uh, what to focus on in the early part of the year and then how to utilize uh, when you're in full swing. And the beginning of the year is solar flares that you have to activate. Now, the problem that we're having here is this. The sun is bombarded by solar flares. They bombard the earth, they, 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 bombard, they bombard the sun, and then they sort of, you know... <coughs> fly outward and then uh, rain down on Earth, which affects our uh, magnetic field. The magnetic field that it affects in you is your aura. And you have to activate them. Having said that, the phase the sun goes through lasts 11 years and it, it, will, be, it, will, it will restart in 2025, which means that the sun is already in what is known as solar maximum. Bottom line is, you're already quite 
empowered and, and quite, yeah, I can do stuff, but you have to turn it up a notch and be really determined to see changes to your year. Really, really important. You can do that. Um, and the latter part of the year or the sort of the, the halfway part of the year and then somewhere onwards in 2024, you will be much, it will be much easier for you to actually look for romance, look for anything to do where you can be just yourself, where it is easier for you to go, to go within, find your tribe. But most of this will only really work when you are determined to uh, find your tribe in 20, in 2024 and, and make things change. And please, you work well under stress. That doesn't mean you have to be stressed, but you can utilize the power that you have, which is the power of not giving in so easily. Okie dok, Virgo, that was that. Going into the next sign, which is Libra. So, Libra, what we do here, this is your 2024 predictive astrology with myself, Thomas Janak. You are watching Thomas Tower Readings. Now, what we will do here is we will look into your year and divide it slightly into two sections. Um, so we can see how best to start of the year and um, how to progress into the second half, if that makes sense, right? And wow, you will love this. <laughs> okay, so Libra, guess what you have as your, as, your, as your card that begins your year? You have Libra. So all that, what that means is, Librans, you, you are tasked to be yourself. Don't follow other people's um, commands, if that makes sense. Find a way to be entirely yourself. You are valuable, you are knowledgeable, and all you ever look for is balance and harmony. There's nothing wrong with it. And when people can't give you harmony, fuck them. Right? Then they're not supposed to be in your life. <coughs> When the new year now comes around, 2024, your job is to put a stop to allowing people that are in your face all the time um, a place in your energy. Be yourself. Pace yourself exactly the way you want to pace yourself. And always remember, your sign is depicted by an old-fashioned scale, so there has to be a counterweight for you to pay attention. Um, but you can be just yourself in 2024, which is awesome. Then towards the, the middle of the year and then towards the remainder of 2024, um, you have a, a change coming in, which means you, 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 you are yourself, which will surprise a couple of people. And then things will change. Very likely you will find a new tribe. If that is the case, so be it, right? Um, and you will, uh, you will be just fine. The reason why I know you will just be fine is because Libra is the seventh sign. So your Libra card has the number seven. Well, if you can see this here. And then your Uranus uh, card, which is the, the planet of unexpected and sudden change, is 25. Five and two is seven, which is also the number of Libra. <laughs> so no matter how you then go into having to, 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 to live through changes. Um, stay within your balance. Trust that everything happens for a reason because it does. Okay. So Libra, to be fair, while you are, um, while you can expect to maybe lose people and then find new ones <coughs> in 2024, it is badly needed that you are who you are and don't allow people to take up your time. Okay, going into Scorpio, let's have a look. So Scorpio, you have the energy of uh, conjunction, which means an alliance working together, and Leo, energy of the sun. So the point is, you are Scorpio. You are the eighth sign because you are depicted by an animal with eight legs, right? So you are number number eight, and 2024, two and two and four is eight. So the energy of 2024, while the energy of 2024 overall is more difficult than 2023 was, believe it or not, <laughs> 2024 
will eat you naturally. You are the one sign that in 2024 can expect not to fall apart, uh, if that makes sense, right? So, but you can't go it alone. Uh, you have the alliance card or conjunction. And the more you do things alone, the harder this will get. Uh, so, so towards the beginning of the year, you may feel a bit isolated and you may feel like, oh, I'm not quite sure what to do here. And because Scorpio, depicted by the scorpion, is the animal with the biggest fight or flight response. And then there is a freeze response in the middle. Your job is to find strengths in others and allow others to maybe help you. Uh, achieve what you maybe feel in the beginning of the year you can't quite manage, right? So reach out to others is really, really important. And then uh, towards um, the middle of the year, when you have found your strengths, um, you have the energy of Leo. And Leo doesn't need to show off. When Leo gets up, everybody pays attention. And that is also what happens to Scorpio. Because the earlier the scorpion speaks up, which means Scorpio, the earlier Scorpio speaks up, the better things are. Now, here's why. You look at the depiction of the scorpion. The taller the scorpion, the larger the pincer. The larger the, pe the pincer, the less venom you need. Because when you have to use venom, it'll drain you too. Right? So, um, show some strengths because you are full of strengths. And remember, 2024 of all the signs, because it's an eight year, will automatically benef benefit you massively. Okay? That was Scorpio going into Sagittarius. Sagittarius, you are watching Thomas's Tower Readings with myself, Thomas Yanak. Now, what we do here, this is your 2024 predictive astrology. So, so we will divide your, your 2024 into sort of two sections, you know, um, even though it's not going to be quite as simple, but we're, we're dividing it in two sections. So we look at how to begin the year, what to look at, and then how to build up that momentum that you have created in the first six months and see where we're going in the last six, if that makes sense, right? Um, let's have a look, <coughs> excuse me, what we got for you. Now, 2024, by default, is an eight year, which means Eight is the number of stumbling blocks. We have to change our view in the new year before we can make changes. But because it comes up here, energetically speaking, changes need to be made. Now, the first thing, first order of business for Sagittarius in the new year is to fix your intimate relationships. Anything to do with your love life, if you're not in a relationship, then maybe there's some other stuff that needs to be fixed, like trauma, you know. Um, maybe you, you, you have a pattern, you, you uh, manifest uh, or you, um, you, know, you manifest the same pattern so you get always the same type of person, which is quite common because if you have to learn a, a lesson, you know, this will send you a similar person. Ultimately, you have the seventh house, which is the house of Libra, which looks for balance and harmony, but it's not good enough in 2024 just to harmonize your relationship. If there needs to be changes made, make them because relationships is super important. If your relationship, your, your intimate relationships don't work, you do not work so well in 2024. So it's time to head on, look at it, confront it and maybe sit your partner down and says, this doesn't work. We have to make changes. Not too much to ask. So, and then comes come the, 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 the middle of the year and so on. Since you have now uh, worked on the most difficult thing that, that you can work on, which is your intimate relationships, you are going on in authority. So you have an authoritative energy here for the latter half of the year, right? So, you 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 um you confront your personal life you make changes and then with that newfound strength because there's a few issues that very likely will have been solved um you have to be in authority the more you can do things on your own and in your own time the more you are self employed the more you are going like this is my life i'm going to run it um the easier 2024 will work for you. 
that was Sagittarius. And now we're looking at Capricorn. Capricorn, this is your 2024 predictive astrology. So what we will do is we will divide your, your year, so to speak, in two sections. It makes it easier to see like how should you approach the new year, what needs to be done in the, in the first half, you know, and then uh, second half, how, so to speak, how do you build on that momentum? Um, let's have a look. So Capricorn, remember, you are the sign that is associated with, um, <laughs> with three animal guides, if that makes sense, and not one of them might really fit you. What that means is that sometimes you don't really know where your head's at uh, because everybody wants a piece of you and it's going to be, and it has always been very difficult in a way for Capricorn as an imprint um, to know when to say no to things and to to um, run things more evenly, if that makes sense. Um, ultimately, 2024, the number two and two and four is eight. Eight is the year of stumbling blocks. So you have to change your view, see things from a different point of view before you can expect things to actually make a lot of sense and flow better. <coughs> Unfortunately, the beginning of 2024 doesn't look high energy from, from my point of view here uh, because you have the number 14. One is new beginnings, four is the number of letting go. So you begin by looking at what doesn't work and let it go, if that makes sense. And that will be, uh, that will bring a bit of discomfort for, for your sign and for you. Um, because making changes is not going to be super, super uh, easy necessarily. But it is not, um, life uh, uh, destroying if that makes sense it's but you can expect uh, 2024 to be a difficult year when it comes to also building up any businesses you want to build up um so it doesn't mean you fail it just means that the growth that you were hoping for may not be as fast as you were hoping for um the advice is to manifest the shit out of out of 2024 and keep going and say to the guides come on you know make this happen if you need me to work harder i will that sort of energy because the second half of the year will actually cut into your resources you can expect i mean you know um, we have a little summer hold hole which means people go on holiday and nothing really happens and you know obviously prices are going up everywhere so people will very likely book you less book all of us self-employed people less if that makes sense um so you can expect the second half of the year to at times cut into your own resources and you just have to, you know, go with the flow and get through it. Uh, but that also has the number of letting go. So do you have a lot of overheads that you don't need, right? What are your costs? What can you do to minimize having to pay for stuff that isn't going anywhere or isn't used, right? Okie dokie, Capricorn. This is your, um, this was your 2024 predictive um, astrology that does not mean everything is shite right but it doesn't flow super well in 2024 so being proactive is the key and first and foremost you had the number four quite a lot number of letting go um, so don't hold on to stuff that isn't for you moving on to aquarius Aquarius, this is your 2024 predictive astrology. We're going to divide your, your, um, year, um, into two sections, which means it makes it easy for us to have a look at, uh, at, um, you know, how do you, um, create momentum in the beginning of the year and then build on it, if that makes sense. So that's how I want to do this year. Um, because momentum, creating momentum is quite important in 2024 since it is the year of stumbling blocks and we have to all be more out there. Now, the good thing for Aquarius is the first energy you have is, ta-da, drum roll, drum roll, Aquarius. <laughs> Which is perfect because that means all you must do is to be yourself. People will very likely therefore try to, um, manipulate you they probably uh, make suggestions and they will probably even mean well um that are not 
100% reflecting who you truly are. So if you feel, you know, if people feel, oh, you should go and, and apply for this job over there and then for this job over there, if you feel like, no, that's not how I work, then that's not how you work. You have to be 100% yourself, especially in the beginning of the year, which is the time when you can expect people to get a bit impatient with you for not being on the same sheet they are. You are the water bearer, right? You do a lot. You give a lot. <coughs> but you also need to take your time. Um, and that is sort of what is important in the first half. Now, the problem is um, that the second half, you have a square or a semi-square. Uh, and the square denotes tension. Luckily, you have a semi-square, which means it's not just going to be a, a, a difficult um, all year round or from the, from the second half of the year to the end. But you have tension, which means because in the beginning of the year you are asked to be just yourself, regardless of circumstances, um, by the mid-year you will probably find that some people do not know what to do with that. <coughs> and there might be uh, difficulties. Ultimately, a semi-square means um, when you, when you, when, when other, so in astrology, when other planets sit in the, in the sun with a, with a, with a, with a, with a, with a square, um, they don't work well together with whatever other, other planets there are. So in the latter half of the year, you have to really choose your tribe and only work with people that are by default on your side and not just on your side when you do what they think you should be doing. Okay, that is that. Now, lastly, we're moving into Pisces. Pisces, hello and welcome. You're watching Thomas' Tower Readings. This is your 2024 predictive astrology. We will divide the year into two sections so we can actually see how to start off the year and then how to build up <coughs> on the momentum that you have to create in 2024. Now, you have strengths and clarification for your energy of 2024. So you will start the year of strong and the number here is 13, right? Um, which is not bad because um, you are the 12th sign <coughs> and there used to be a 13th, which was Ophiuchus, which actually is a completely different timeline to your timeline. <coughs> but in Ophiuchus is where the medicine man sits. So you do your thing, Pisces, and you will be supported by the universe. And if you do struggle, the universe will give you little energy boosts, if that makes sense, which is what the medicine man does. So, but you also have the number 13, which means one and three is four, number of letting go. Do not carry stuff with you into 2024 that you know damn well aren't working. Now, if it wasn't tempting to do that, it wouldn't come up. So, right, just be aware um, that it might not be super easy to leave everything behind. Having said that, it is your job not to restart the new year with the same, same shit of the last year. Really, really important. So you show strengths in the beginning of the year. Uh, therefore, you're going to be proactive. Um, a lot of opportunities will simply come to you. And then towards the... The middle of the year and then towards the end, so, you know, carrying over uh, towards the end of the year, you have solar calm. So the uh, the sun at the moment is in solar maximum, which means um, there's more and more solar flares hitting hitting the sun. Um, therefore, there's a lot of strength going on, but also a lot of exhaustion going on. So in the second half, the latter half of 2024, you just clarify your position, which means you tell people, I'm not going to do that, or that's what I want to do, right? If, if there is too much going on, you have to make sure you're not going to be overworked in the latter half of 2024. And this can happen because you have strengths in the first part. So if you have a lot of new opportunities coming, when opportunities are coming your way in difficult times, uh, like, like, the, like the difficult times you're living in, you wouldn't want to say no to new clients, would you? And yet you are being asked to pay attention to how much you actually can do without falling apart. Okie dokie. That's all I got. Thank you all for watching. That was your 2024. Um, 
predictive astrology with myself, Thomas Janak. Like I said, it's been a while since I have recorded videos for all signs. I'm not quite sure when I get, get around to do it again. Um, uh, watch the channel. Please like, subscribe and share and see what the year brings. Now, I am Pisces. And I just said in Pisces that while I have a lot of strengths in the beginning of the year, come the latter half, I have to really watch at what and how much I can do that might affect the channel. We'll see, right? Please, please, please support the channel. If you don't watch this, if I don't get the numbers, um, it's pointless for me to put all the work in. And it's not too much to ask to get some feedback every now and then because I haven't got a bloody notion if this makes any sense to anybody because nobody's bloody talking. Okay? See you soon.